not all signings are created equal, right? right? So $100 million guaranteed for Kirk Cousins. It sounds like a lot, but the reality is, for that team, I think it made all the sense in the world. I think they're much closer than people are saying. I think they were badly coached, and they were terribly quarterbacked last year. And if they have better coaching with average to slightly above average quarterback play, I think they are a legitimate Super Bowl contender in the NFC. That's right, I said it. Absolutely. I agree with you. And I think that we've seen, of course, you want to pay a lot of money to get a guy like Patrick Mahomes or Josh Allen. You know what? They ain't out there. They're not going to be available. This is what you, we have seen that the 49ers have gotten close and been capable of winning the Super Bowl. We think that the Lions are capable of winning the Super Bowl. That's the type of quarterback that they've added to a roster that is similar to those rosters. So I, I like it as a move. Who cares? You don't want to win the transaction. Who cares about how much you're paying him? Are you a legitimate contender now when you add him? Yes. That's what it costs to get him. Legitimate Super Bowl contender, I said. Kmart. Yeah, that's that's a bridge too far. Bridge too far. <laughs> bridge too far. Atlanta can't play with everybody in that division. Oh, excuse oh, me, in, that, well, in the NFC. Okay, they now can't we're talking. play with everybody first in the all, NFC. First of all, I think you guys are sleeping on the Bucks. I understand that that in that division, the Falcons upgrade, huge upgrade at quarterback. But did we forget that the Bucks always win that division and they are five for five on signing their own guys in free agency? So I don't even know if the Falcons are winning their division number one. When I look at Green Bay, when I look at the Packers and the offseason that they have had, okay. When I look at the 49ers, their roster, even Dallas, like I, and then the Eagles, monster move, getting Saquon, right? Yeah. So I, I'm not, I, they are improved, but I don't think Super Bowl contenders. Super Bowl Just, contenders, D Wood, yay or nay? Bridge too far for me. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Bishop. I think, okay. I think listen, I, I will say this. Raheem Moore said in his pre opening press conference that Maybe. he wouldn't be Bishop. here if they had a quarterback. Mm -hmm. They addressed the quarterback. That's a big, big issue with all the weapons and all that. They, you know, I think Zach Robinson, offensive coordinator, is going to know how to utilize all the pieces that they, all those hot draft picks yeah. that they've accumulated over yeah. the past three, three, three plus years. So I, this, this team is definitely going to be elevated with Cooker. But, Am I, am I going to sit here and say that they're going to be able to compete with the 49ers? Yeah. With, with, yeah. with Philadelphia? Yeah. Oh, I'm like, 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 I'm can I, I'm say that. Can I say yeah, this? I'm just let's, not be, yeah. let's be clear. Greeny and I are not saying that they're the favorites in NFC. We're saying that they are contenders. So what do they have, or excuse me, what do the Lions have that they don't have? Like, the Lions' defense was bad last year. And you know what? They had the 49ers against the ropes. Like, and they are happened? capable. They are capable of winning their division. The Falcons oh, me, were a over. sleeping giant. This is their opportunity to be awakened. You know how old I am? I'm old enough to remember when Drake London was drafted ahead of Garrett Wilson and no one blinked an eye. I'm old enough to remember when Kyle Pitts was the fourth pick in the draft and people said he was going to be the revolutionize the tight end position. I'm old enough to remember when Bijan Robinson was the can't-miss prospect running back of a decade. They've all missed. Why? Because for some reason, they chose not to give any of them the ball, maybe because the quarterback there wasn't capable of doing it. With Kirk Cousins, that crew, and better coaching, that team is going to be legit. I just need Kirk Cousins to do something in the postseason. But, and I think the, the thing that, could okay. under, I mean, that, that would undercut all of this would be the offensive line. They're good too. Yes. Oh like, yeah, no, they know. I, yeah, that's, so that's, like, that's, that's, I don't that's, see a reason for pessimism. Kirk Cousins, Cousins is going to be at least average with this great talent around a quarterback that's going am to be I, at hold least on, average. Hey, excuse me, am I sounding pessimistic? You yes. are. How? Yes, you are. And why is Kirk not think looking that, at me? I said they're they going. I think they're going to win what? the NFC you South. Know what? This is the problem. We just want to crown everybody in March. Let, this is a great move. Let's see if they win their division. That's all I'm saying. You want to crown them green? Well, go ahead and crown them. The word crown. was contender. Go ahead and crown them. The the are who we <laughs> thought they were. <laughs> all right, we're back on Get Up. Bottom of the hour. Let's go through some of the big free agent moves that have taken place, and we'll do it in the form of sound off. Here are some interesting people saying interesting things. There may be no one more interesting in sports right now than Jason Kelsey. So he retires. Then his former team, the Eagles, make this huge, splashy signing of Saquon Barkley. So now Kelsey has weighed in on how he felt when he heard that news. A little bit upset how he waited till I retired to make a move like this. This is what I'm regretting. I knew when I retired <laughs> that I was going to miss just an outstanding season for the Philadelphia Eagles. And it sucks. It really does. I want to be a part Damn. of this so bad. I wish I could. Okay, so, I mean, that's a fascinating thing because unless I missed a meeting, he could. <laughs> it's not, I don't think there was, like, a league mandate that he had to retire. But one way or the other, I am of the opinion 
and, and we touched on this briefly earlier, and I want you to use the example that you did. When we talk about the amount of money that Saquon got and the impact he could have on that team and how it's a lot for a running back, right. why that rubs you the wrong way, because I'm totally on your side. Because there are, like, we're moving in a direction in football where there are, like, some positionless players, and there are players that are good enough to be a focal point of an offense. It doesn't matter what position they play. Like, it could be Kelsey. He's a tight end. It doesn't matter. You pay him what it requires for a guy who you have to game plan for. And when Saquon Barkley's money went up and everybody was like, this is more than we expected for a running back. And then I saw, like, some receivers, like, no disrespect, but, like, Gabe Davis is not that type of impact player. But he's getting the same amount as Saquon Barkley, all because of the running back market. So there is no perfect solution for this. But understanding that Saquon Barkley's not a running back. Christian McCaffrey's not a running back. They are difference makers. Those are the guys that keep the defensive coordinator up the night before uh, the game, and they are going to their meeting like, we're going to build everything to stop this guy. You don't pay that guy 13 a year. I wholeheartedly agree, and I'll take it a step further, Dee Wood. From the second he set foot on a field in any game we've ever seen, both at Penn State and every single snap he was on the Giants, he was the focal point yeah, of yeah. the other defense. Now he won't be. Now that, that, has, that load has to be at least shared because they got to worry about A.J. on one side. They got to worry about Devontae on the other side. They got to worry about the quarterback taking off and running. Saquon Barkley, I think, I don't know that his volume will be what it has been in the past. I think he is going to have an enormous impact on that offense. Absolutely. And I think the thing is, what I'm curious to see with the Philadelphia Eagles is how much quarterback design runs are they going to get back to. Because remember that, like, that was kind of like part of their downfall offensively because we always talk about when quarterback design runs, it's a numbers game. Right. Now you have Saquon Barkley in the same backfield with Jalen Hurts. It, it's going to be unbelievable for Saquon Barkley because, because for so long he was the guy. Yeah. Like, you go into the game, it's like, okay, we shut down Saquon Barkley. They, they can't do anything. Yep. Now you go to Philadelphia with all these weapons. Like, Saquon Barkley has to be jumping for joy being this type, in this type of offense. What do you think, Kmart? Yeah, because jumping off of D. Wood's point, talking to defensive coordinators all last year, when it, years I've covered the Giants, when you talk to them about, okay, what do you do to stop this offense? They're like, it starts with 26. It wasn't starting with eight. Yeah. It literally is Saquon. It will never be easier for him. Like, you think about, Hembo sent me this stat. He averaged 99 scrimmage yards per game with the Giants. That is 1,680 yards. Like, and that is with, let's just say it nicely, not the best yeah. O-line there's, play. There's nobody else to draw attention. Like, they didn't have receivers that were commanding no. doubles. They didn't have a quarterback who was picking you apart. And they didn't have an offensive line that was road grading, and he was doing that there. And I, I, I share, you, you said, I don't want to pick out one person and sound like we're disrespecting yeah. them. God bless Gabe Davis. I'm glad he got all the money that he got. But Jacksonville is paying him $13 million a year. Let's call it the same thing. It's actually slightly more than Saquon is getting, right? Gabe Davis last year was 51st in the league in targets, 56th in receptions, 41st in yards. Right? Saquon Barkley is, at worst, the fourth best running back in the right. National yeah. Football League. But it's not Green, it, 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 I want to go back to what Dominic said. It's absolutely true. I'm paying guys that you have to game plan for. Right. You walk into the stadium or you walk into a meeting it's like, if we don't take care of this guy, we don't have a shot. It's yeah. Saquon Barkley is like, he's one of those rare guys that we had in the league along the same lines of Christian McCaffrey and some of these other guys where you literally go into the mean on Wednesday and be like, this is the guy we got to eliminate. I hate that for, for him. And like, Christian was reasonable for to be MVP last year, his impact on right. Like, some people argue that he should have been. But I hate it for them because when their agent goes in the meeting and the agent's like, hey, this is what number we want, the team comes back to them and is like, well, this is what we pay running backs. I'm not no damn running back. Right. That's, right. I ain't one of these dudes. But like, I'm not just right. one of these guys that's going to come in here and fit into an offense. So I understand that the value that you're going to get for Saquon, the difference between him and the mediocre running back is smaller than the value from Justin Jefferson to a mediocre receiver. But the impact on your offense is different. It's harder to measure, I think. Well, that was Debo Samuel's point. Like, exactly. I'm not just one position. Like, Saquon Barkley is a playmaker weapon, period. He is a home run hitter still. And when you think about the, when you look at his numbers, you have to add the context of what was around him and him still carrying that offense. Now, if I'm A.J. Brown, Granted, maybe I get less touches, but if I'm Devontae Smith, I'm like, okay, we have an explosive guy in the run game, but we also have a weapon in the play action game. Like, that frees up everybody. Like, this 
offense is going to be very difficult to stop yeah. as long as he stays healthy. Let me tell you, who Ooh. can get the ball to George Pickens? <laughs> who can get the ball to Pat Farmer? Kenny Pickett couldn't get that. Or Russell Wilson wouldn't be in Pittsburgh right now. So, listen, I, I, I think Russell Wilson is going to, um, going to win the job. When, when that, this whole situation, I just think of Ryan Tannehill in Tennessee. Like, you got off the Smith right now. If, if Russell Wilson plays like Ryan Tannehill was it, when they were together in Tennessee, if you're Pittsburgh, you couldn't ask for much more than that. Can I ask you a question? And sure. You're the offensive player sitting here, and, and so that's why I'm most interested in your perspective on this. If there is a defense to be made of Kenny Pickett, who obviously has not played well in his first two seasons, <coughs> generally it is being made that the coaching was a real problem. They yes. have Matt Canada there as the offensive coordinator. Many people thought that Mike Tomlin let him stay too long, yeah. finally fired him during last season. So is it fair to say, because I think this is the point Lewis was making, that the coaching was a significant problem for Pickett and that now with the fresh start, with the good new coach and everything else, that he has a chance to be much better? Yes, I do agree with that. Um, we know that we've talked at nauseum about Matt Canada and, and his inability to use a lot, utilize all the weapons that were with the Pittsburgh Steelers and get the most out of Kenny Pickett. And that's why they went with Arthur, Arthur Smith. I, I, will, I will say this. If this thing is close, it's going to go to Kenny Pickett. Because the Pittsburgh Steelers as an organization, they're not going to give up on their first-round pick. A guy who went to the University of Pittsburgh right there in their backyard, they're not going to give up on him. So I think Russell Wilson has to be significantly better than Kenny Pickett to win the job. I do. That's what the smile came by. Because your question to D. Wood was, can Kenny Pickett get better? And I think Mike Tomlin had Matt Canada in that position. He held on to him too long. <clears throat> Matt Ca Mike Tomlin also replaced him with two different guys to be their OC last year, and Kenny Pickett struggled. You think Mike Tomlin is ready to say, ah, that Kenny Pickett pick, ooh, not great. You don't think that Mike Tomlin is going to want to give his guy from jump the chance to at least show with a, quote, unquote, if you want to say, real OC what he can do? I, am, I think Russell, if we're being honest, Russell is clearly better than Kenny Pickett. He should be the starter. I don't know if he will be. Because think about if you start with Russell first. Can you go back to Kenny Pickett? Or... Uh no, you, I'm start, a, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, which is the move you can unmake and, and the one you can't unmake? I want to say this. Here's what I'm going to say, and Nick can speak to this as well. You can't fool the players. Yeah, like, if you are right. here, if, if you, if Russell, if, like, the players can see it. Everyone can yeah. see it. If, if, if Russell Wilson is clearly outplaying Kenny Pickett, like, you can't, that scenario can, can never play itself out in yeah, the locker The Tennessee example is a good one because Arthur Smith, or, well, uh, it was, um, uh, Vrabel at the time brought in Tannehill from Miami to sit behind behind Mariota. Next right. thing you know, he's a starter and he's having a great season. That could be a similar situation right. if um, Russell buys in. But you're right. If it's close, there's one thing. But Kenny Pickett, I don't know how the players feel about him right. in the locker room. I don't know what his relationships are. That means a lot. If they are done with him already, which sometimes happens, they can't wait for somebody to come in there, then it don't matter. Russell has to start. Right. If, they, if they have faith in him and they also believe that he's been, like, railroaded because of coordinator issues, then Here, that's, that's the thing. Here's all we need to know in Pittsburgh is that guys on that team were excited that Mason Rudolph was throwing them the football, that Mason Rudolph was running the offense, a guy who was literally just chilling on the bench for, for a couple seasons. Maybe we get the rarest of things in the NFL, and that is a true open competition. Right. I mean, I, we always think that – we always assume yeah. that teams yeah. are going into it with, with a vested interest. Well, I hope this works out, but if it doesn't, then we'll go this way. Maybe they really have it open. May the best man win. Of the organizations that I believe to tell us the truth, it, it is the Steelers. Yeah. I think that they have stood by what they believe in. And if they say it's going to be an open competition, I believe them. But – the bottom line is the players know. It's not Mike right. Tom. Mike Tom is going to say the words, but it's not his decision.